In this video I'll talk about how to go about digitizing a uh, design. Uh, this particular design I had emailed to me. Since I use Outlook I'll just click the import attachments from Outlook as I have that email already selected. If I didn't have Outlook and use this button I'd have to save the attachment and then come up here to um, import, go and find the file and then import it. Uh, but the import Outlook attachments does that automatically for me. So the next thing that I'll do is using my pick tool, I'll select the piece, and if I click twice on it, it switches to the rotate handles. So I can rotate this counterclockwise here. If I hold down control while I rotate, it snaps to 15 degree increments. So I'm just going to snap it here at 90 degrees. So the part that I need to digitize is this Hope Tattoo. Um, I've got about 8 to 10 inches of space to work with, so I can resize it uh, either here with the handles or since I know how much size I want, I'm just going to draw a freehand line from here to here. That's 2.6 inches now, but if I click on the Pick tool and then while holding Shift, I click on the piece behind it, which is the picture, then I can use auto size and I can say I have 10 inches of space to work with and I'm going to delete the original just hit apply what that does is it resizes that picture so that this area here is now 10 inches so I can start working over the top of it now another thing that I could have done is I could have gone and cropped it using the crop tool. You just click and drag. Make sure that you have selected what you want to crop first. Double click to crop it. And then I could have resized this. Um, but since I've already sized it, I don't need to do that. But that gives me 8 inches by 10 inches there, so I should be good. If I have it selected, I can hold down Shift and F2 at the same time, and that will zoom in uh, to anything that's selected. So Shift F2 to zoom to selected. First thing that I normally do is right click on my bitmap because I want to lock, uh, sorry, before I lock it I actually want to make it transparent a little bit. So I select the transparency tool. The second option on the bar is uniform transparency so that it's all transparent. And 50 is fine, but if you slide that transparency to the right it'll be more transparent and to the left will be less transparent. I just want it to be a little bit um, transparent so that as I draw over the top of it I'll be able to see my lines better. Once I have it transparent I'll right click and then I'll lock the object and what that does is it makes it so that if I'm clicking anywhere on here it's not selecting that bitmap by accident so as I draw it won't accidentally select. If I click on the down arrow next to the drawing tools, it pops up the other options. I want to do the polyline. I like the polyline because it does both straight line and curves, uh, curved segments in the same tool without having to do anything extra. So if I were to just click and move my mouse around, you'll see it's drawing a straight line. So every time I click, it's drawing a new straight line segment. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the outside of this design. Everywhere that the direction of the curve changes, I'm going to make a click. And then I have to make sure I click here at the end in order to, to end that curve. So it doesn't look like it matches up really well, but that's because we haven't gone and curved our pieces. So the next thing I do is I double click on the shape tool and it selects all of my nodes and then I can do what's called convert to curve or two on the keyboard and now all of those straight line segments have now become curved segments. If you click off on the white space then it will clear your selection so I don't have any of those selected now. With my zoom tool, I'll now zoom in and start working on uh, bending this around. 
So with the Shape tool, I'm able to edit my nodes and my lines. If you click on a node, then it pops up the handles. These handles here, if you click and drag on them, it'll bend the curve. Control Z to undo. Or you can click anywhere on the curve and just bend it. And you can click the nodes, drop those down. So to get more precise bending, you would grab the handles. But if you just wanted to bend the whole thing a little bit, wherever you click on the line itself, so this bent pretty evenly to right there. If I undo and click here and bend from there, you'll see how it bends more that way. And the same thing if I click down here and bend, you'll see how it bends more that way. So depending on where you grab on the line to pull on it will change how much and where it it bends. So I'm just going to click on these nodes and the handles and just drag them around until I can get it pretty much to where it is in the in the picture. I'm going to get exact as exact as I can. If you double click on a node it erases it. It looks like I created a few extra nodes here, so I'll just double click on that one, double click on that one to get rid of those. I like to zoom in and out using my mouse wheel if I'm working with my mouse. You can get a more precise zoom if you uh, if you hold down shift while you zoom it, it goes in and out in less increments. If you don't, then it's a bit larger. If you hold control while you're zooming, it will pan left and right. And if you hold alt while you're zooming, it will pan up and down. So that's while, I, while using the, the mouse wheel. So I find it to be easiest and, and cleanest to go ahead and just make our our straight lines first and then go around and bend them as opposed to uh, drawing curves first or using the Bezier tool or something to draw as I go around. Um, I think it's faster just to do it this way. Right now I have um, snap to object selected so that as I draw drag things around it's trying to snap to, to different things. Um, usually I'll uncheck snap to objects and guidelines so that as I try to mess with this in small increments it's not going to try to snap to anything. If you click anywhere on a line, double click anywhere on the line it will actually add a node. and double clicking on the node will delete it. So I'm just dragging around, double clicking on the extra nodes that got created there. So for instance here, if I want that curve to be a, a little bit more smooth, I can add a node here. The first thing that I like to do when I add a node though is turn it into a cusp so that if I bend this side, it's not going to bend that side because right now that's smooth. Um, so if you hit C on your keyboard as soon as you create your node, it then cusps it. You can see that up here. That's the cusp and that is the smooth. Um, so if I hit C, C actually toggles between cusped and smooth, so you can just hit C or you can hit S. S will also just smooth it. So now that I've created this node up here, if I double click on this one to get rid of it, what it will do is it will bend nicely uh, from there up to there. I can just edit that bend a little bit. Oop, I guess I had changed this back to a cusp or to a smooth node, so I want to recusp that.
I even just deleted that all together and it now made it nice and smooth all the way up to there. Okay, so we've got the outside of our H drawn. Now we need to do the inside of our H. So once again, going back to the polyline, I'll just click here, and I'll click up here, and then I'm just going to click right back where we started. Uh, the cursor changes to that arrow. Once you see that arrow, that means you're going to reconnect back to the original. Double click again, convert all the curves, and then I can click and drag on one and drag it this way, click and drag on the other and drag it this way. And that way I can edit the inside of the curve here. Same thing down here on this part of the H. Just going to click, click back, click where I started, double click, convert to curves, drag one this way, drag one out this way, and then I can click on the node to edit the handles to get it a little bit more how I want it to be. Okay, once we've got the H done, um, we can do this if we want. You can marquee select, so I just clicked out here in the white space anywhere. I could click inside here as well because I have that locked, but if I click out here and drag around, it'll select all three of those curves. We can see it here in the object manager if you have that docker open. And what I would want to do is I'd want to combine these together so that they're now one curve. And if I fill it in, then you'll see that it's filled in with black and those parts there are see-through because they're combined with the others. If I didn't have it combined, if I went and broke it apart again, what happens is I've got those other curves there, um, but you can't really see them because they're black as well. You could fill them in with a different color um, and move them to the top so that they're above the black, but it's better, I think, to just combine them all together so that they're one curve. And that would be here, combine, which is control L. That way they're see-through. Now looking at this, so I've got a line that goes from here to here, and it kind of bends down there in the middle. Um, so I think it would look a little bit better if we brought this and this out a little bit more, changed the way that that's bending. Same thing here. All right, the next part is the ribbon. So the ribbon I'm going to do a little bit differently. Instead of doing an outside and an inside, I'm actually going to just draw a single line. So I'll take my polyline. And if you have a, a tablet or if you're pretty good with the mouse, you can click and drag instead of doing the dot to dot method. And what that does is it allows you to draw a curve. And then if I let go, it'll switch to a line. And then I click and drag again, and it goes back to a curve. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way through. And I'll show you why here in a second. Double clicking ends that line. If I come back to where we started, I can click there and start again. That way it stays connected. Up and around, and then double click to end it. And then there's this inside line here. So I'll draw that as well. Double click to end it. Okay, so I want to combine all these together. So if I marquee select the two, you can marquee select or you can select one, shift, select the other, that's fine as well. Combine them together. 
And before I do anything else, I want to go ahead and edit these lines now. Uh, when you're drawing freehand like that, it it, it curves okay. Um, sometimes, sometimes you get extra nodes. Sometimes it's you know best to move it around or move things around a little bit. So I'm going to just double click as we did before and change everything to curves. And I actually want to change everything to cusps as well, since I wasn't doing just straight line segments. Everything did not start out as a cusp. Um, so I'll edit my lines here first. This one, um, I actually want that one to snap to the other one. So I'll turn snapping back on and snap it to the edge. But as I change this, that, that line's actually going to change. So I will wait until I get this line where I want it first. These I might as well just bring those together and join them. So if I drag that, I can snap it to the edge. Zooming in, I can take this one and snap it to the edge or to that node. Okay, so the reason that I uh, did my single line and even went through here is for the same reason that right there, you know, those don't quite match up perfectly and those don't quite match up perfectly. So if you do it this way, um, your beginning and ending here will actually match up better. Uh, however, we're going to have to get rid of the overlaps, which is fine. Alright, so I've got the whole thing drawn. What I want to do is I want to turn it to um, a, th a thicker line, a 0 0.09 inch line. So I can click on my line width tool and if I don't know how thick that's set for, I can hold control and click on it and it will tell me that it's set for 0 0.09. So I'll just save it at that. And if I have that selected, I can click line width. And What that does is it gives it a 0 0.09 inch outline. Um, it's still just an outline, so if I went to wireframe, you'd see it's still a single line. Um, so we won't worry about getting the double line quite yet. We'll do that after we have everything set first. But I wanted to outline it first to make sure that it looks the way we want it to. Once again, Control z undoes. Control shift z will redo. Okay, so here where we have the overlapping lines, um, we're going to get rid of this one and this one. And to do that easily, all we have to do is go to the virtual segment delete and click here and click here. And what that does is it deletes anything between intersections. So when it intersected there and there, um, it deleted back to that intersection. So now we can see that we've got our, our overlap the way that it needs to be. And then in order to get this to um, to be sandblastable, all we have to do is go up to Object and say Convert Outline to Object. If I'm in the wireframe, you'll see what happens. So right now I've got our single line. If I go up to Object and say Convert Outline to Object, then it will convert that to something that's sandblastable and my line thickness is that 0 0.09 inches. If I wanted it to be a little bit thicker, I can change that here. This is in points, but I could do 0.1 and type in IN for inches and hit enter, and it would change, it would do the math for me for, uh, for the equivalent in inches or in points. And once again, go up to object and say convert outline to object, and it would do that. The one nice thing about using outlines is that if I were to shrink this design down, it's maintaining the thickness of that outline. So if I go larger, my line thickness is still 0 0.09 inches, or 0 0.1, since that's what I changed it to. If I go smaller, it's still 0 0.1. And then all you have to do is remember to uh, convert that outline to object. 
The one downside is that I can't fill this design in very well. If I were to try to fill it in, um, it doesn't work because it's not actually closed. There's a lot of open holes here. So that's that's the downside, is that you're not able to do that, uh, to fill it in. But it is nice to be able to resize things and, and have them still blastable. So since I know that this is how big I want this to be, um, if I wanted to, I could just move this over to the side. So I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna take this piece and drag it over. While I'm dragging with my left mouse, I'll just do a quick right mouse click so it changes to a plus sign, and then I'll let go, and that will uh, leave that there. Um, or even instead of that, I'll just select it and I'll say File, Save As. And since I've got that selected, um, what I can do is I can say that this is a pink ribbon. I can give it a tag of pink ribbon, um, colon, maybe breast cancer maybe awareness. So the more tags, the better it's going to be later on. And I do select it only. That way, when I save this, oh, I also want to say that it's a, uh, I like to tag my designs as smart designs if they have the, uh, the outlines applied to them that way. So I'll tag it that way and choose the version that I want to save it in. I usually only use 18 because that's what I use, but if I were to save to another version I could do 17 or whatever. But the selected only is what I want so that when I save this it's only going to save the ribbon and not any of the other design. That way I can reuse that later. And I'm saving it that way um, so that now I can convert this outline to objects and since it's now objects, I can fill it in using this fill grayscale, and it would fill in for me. Okay, so we'll do the next two the same way. Um, once again, I think it's actually faster to just click. If you've got a pen, it might be faster just just to draw. Um, but if I were to just draw around this. depending on how well it's working um, will determine how much cleanup I have to do. And I probably should have done this on the H, but I wasn't thinking about it. So I went in and did the, the lines and went, we'll mess with the overlaps after that. So that wasn't too bad. That might have even been faster than clicking and, and bending my curves. Um, but I do want to double click everything convert everything to cusp, convert everything to curves, and that way when I come in to make my edits, it'll edit nicely. Uh, I want to turn snapping off again so that as I curve this around, I can do so nicely without worrying about what it's hitting. Double-clicking deletes a node. Looks like this comes down a little bit further, so I'm going to double-click here to add a node, hit C to cusp, and then I'll just drag that down a little bit. Might even get rid of that one. The less nodes you have, the better off you're going to be. Um, so as, as few as you can get away with, the better. And I think it's a it's pretty surprising how much of a bend you can give just between two nodes. So you, this node and that node, we can bend all the way up and around and back down just between two nodes. Okay, so now that we've got that, once again, um, we're not going to outline it because we're just filling in the inside. So I will use virtual segment to delete again, 
and you can do a marquee selection. So if I click and drag down, it'll delete both of those at the same time. You can click and drag across, click and drag across. So the downside to this is that these pieces here are not closed in. Uh, so the second half of uh, virtual segment delete is if I hold down shift, it changes to this tool, and I just click and drag a marquee around. And what that does is anywhere that there's overlapping nodes, it will join those nodes together. Now that they're joined together, I can fill my E in with black. If I hadn't done that, it wouldn't have joined correctly, or it would not have filled correctly. So now we'll work on the P. And since I had success with just drawing, I'll just go ahead and do that. With the straight line or straight pieces, um, you know, it's easy to just drag around, click and drag. Um, actually, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to go back to start all over. Sorry, I was doing it kind of how we did it with the H. Let's try this again. There we go. This one's a little bit trickier, I guess. Maybe I'll just do multiple pieces. close it off. Okay. Double click, convert to curves, cusp all those nodes. Same thing here, double click, convert to curves, cusp all those nodes. Double click to delete that one. going to bend these a little bit more. Okay, where they're overlapping, uh, so I could use virtual segment delete to to go through and delete all those pieces and then um, put them together, or it's even easier on this particular one if I take this piece, shift select this piece, I can do what's called a weld, or hit W on my keyboard, and it would weld those pieces together. So anywhere that there's overlapping lines, it actually gets rid of those for me and closes it all in. So then I can just fill that in. Okay. So the entire design, if we wanted to, we could grab it all and combine that all together, and that would give us the entire design, just like that. I right clicked on this, I could unlock it, and then I could hit delete. Now if we wanted to, since this is going on a stone, just to simulate what that would look like if I drew a rectangle, turned it to 30% gray, and then I hold shift and hit page down to drop it to the bottom, you'll see that this is not frosted or anything. So if I wanted this to be frosted, that's why I used the fill grayscale before so that it frosted that. Um, but because of the way we have this drawn, it's going to frost anything that's on the inside of it. So we could use knockout to knock those back out, where we would just click on each of these pieces that we don't want to be frosted. And then hit escape when we're done. And that will knock that all out. But it actually keeps those pieces separated, so um, I guess we really didn't need to, to do that, as we already had it that way. Uh, we could also select all these pieces and group them so that they would stay together. Or, if I ungrouped, I could take the black, shift select all these letters, and then shift select just the black part and combine all those together. So the black is one piece, and then my frosted part is another piece. So, 
I'll just delete this, I don't really need that part. I just hit delete on the keyboard in order to delete. Now this one, I will save this also. I'll just go up to file and say save. Since we haven't saved this at all yet, it'll prompt us to, to save it as something other than untitled. Um, so I'll go ahead and rename this one. Usually when I'm creating new artwork, I actually uh, give it a number instead of a name, but since this one will go to somebody else, I'll go ahead and give it a name. Oh, uh, ribbon. And I can tag this as Hope Ribbon Breast Cancer Pink. Um, could also say Tattoo since it came from a tattoo. And those are the tags that I want to give it. And I can save it as version 17 since that's who it'll be going to is using version 17. And I'll click Save. And now we've got our design.